The Trump Organization could be officially charged by prosecutors on Thursday. That's according to the Wall Street Journal and a number of other U.S. media outlets. But the company and its chief financial officer will be charged with tax crimes. And so although Donald Trump himself may be out of office, the legal troubles are growing for the former president, who may or may not decide to run for the presidency again in 2024. For more on what this could mean for the Trump Organization and Trump himself, our commentators are standing by. Steve Farnsworth is in Washington, Dahlia Fami is in New York, and Republican strategist Annette Meeks is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Annette, I'd like to start with you. Welcome to the panel. What do you think is going to come out of all this? Well, I think it's it's highly unlikely. We, we can predict anything that happens in this case. Uh, there's so many unknown variables. Uh, I do know that, uh, that now that the president is out of office, uh, there's a lot of scrutiny uh, going through all of the financial transactions of his businesses and, and whatnot will continue, and that will continue for some time. Uh, I assume he has very good lawyers, and they will handle this appropriately. How about you, Steve, your read on this, uh, and uh, whether you think this has a potential to do damage to Donald Trump or, or perhaps not? Oh, Donald. looks, yeah, go ahead, Steve. Uh, we had a little technical issue there. Can you hear us? No, we don't have Steve. Okay, let's go to Dahlia. Dahlia, you weigh in on this. What do you think? Look, tomorrow's charges are really limited. They're against the Trump Organization and, and very limited numbers of employees against um, charges related to failure to pay taxes on benefits and perks, apparently, allegedly, including apartments and cars. It's a very limited scope. Tomorrow, we're not going to see the watershed moment. But what we do have to remember is that the former president actually faces many, many other cases. For example, in Georgia, in Fulton County, remember the famous phone call where he wanted wanted the, the 11,000 votes to be found. There's a criminal investigation um, brought to, against him by the prosecutor that includes criminal solicitation, racketeering, election fraud. There's a sexual harassment case against him by a former contestant on The Apprentice. There's still the um, hush money payment paid to the adult film star Stormy Daniels. Cy Vance, the New York uh, attorney, district attorney who's bringing the charges tomorrow, also has a complaint complete other case against the former president and his the Trump organization dealing with tax evasion. Similarly, in New York City, the, um, uh, the uh, district attorney, Letitia James, has a civil case against the former president looking at his inflation and devaluation of his worth in order to get business loans. So tomorrow might not be the watershed moment, but the former president still faces up to five other major trials. Hey, Annette, I wonder whether, in a way, this might work in Donald Trump's favor, and follow me here for a second, that the president has often said, look, you know, the establishment is against me. I can't cut a break. I can't do anything. And so uh, I'm just curious to get your read on whether, to a certain extent, this again shows that he is fighting the system. Uh, well, I think that is certainly a very large part of it. I think the other part of it is that uh, whenever you have the power of the government and you turn that loose on an individual or an individual corporation, in this case, um, it's a very dangerous precedent. And they better make sure they've crossed all their T's and dotted all their I's, because this makes a lot of people very, very nervous that the power of the government can go in and, with subpoena power, uh, take take businesses down, take individuals down. It's a very scary precedent. And I certainly hope, because some of these things certainly do lack merit on at least on the face of them, that uh, that the those charges that are, if and when they are eventually brought, are very serious crimes, not just some of these petty things that uh, have persisted ever since Donald Trump announced he was running for president. Yeah, and just one more for you, Annette. The idea that this relates to the CFO of the Trump Organization uh, and not actually Donald Trump changes the narrative a little bit, too. And as we know, it's the idea that there were perks given to the CFO, allegedly, and he didn't pay taxes on them, and the Trump Organization didn't declare that. So, again, this is a, uh, a white-collar crime, if it turns out to be true. But it's not necessarily a, quote, smoking gun against Donald Trump himself. And how does that sort of affect the story, Annette? Well, and I also think it's, it does not rise to the level that most people look at and say, oh, my goodness, thank goodness they brought that person to justice for that hideous crime. Uh, there's a lot of things that are happening in this country right now that deserve a lot more scrutiny and certainly a lot more prosecution. 
than someone who inadvertently didn't pay taxes uh, on a gift that they were given by a corporation. A last word on this to you, Dahlia. What do you think? Just in terms of, of the optics, you know, there's been a lot of hype about the charges that he's going to face. You uh, rightly point out there are a number of other ones still percolating in the background. But this specific one, do you think it gives Donald Trump and his defenders, you know, some room to say, well, you know, again, what's the big deal here? This is all being, quote, trumped up when there's not a lot there. You know, there, there's two things that we know is certain in life, and it's death and taxes. <laughs> this is a simple tax evasion um, case tomorrow. This is not the big criminal cases brought against the president for his own business dealings, his own financial holdings, his own inflation, and also the election fraud and racketeering. And so this one just happens to be coming at us first. And so I, I, I can understand how the former president will see that this is a, a petty issue. But what we need to really understand is the bigger picture of a criminal enterprise that was conducting affairs for a very long time um, illegally. And so for this to be one of the first charges, even though in our eyes it might seem minor, in many ways cr uh, criminal white-collar um, offenses need to be uh, taken to the, to the nth degree.